Hello and welcome to the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company podcast episode 20 something. Um, you're very welcome. I'm Emma, but I'm sure you already know that. All my stuff's down below. So um, I don't like um, hanging about too much because uh, the last few podcasts have been too long and they've took way too long to upload to YouTube. So I'm going to try and make them a little bit quicker. So what, as you can see, I've got a finished object. This is my scale grassware by LB Hand Knits. And um, I don't think I had finished this in the last episode. I was just working on the last sleeve. And uh, yeah, I finished it. So oops, my props getting in the way. <laughs> um, I finished it, I'm really happy with it and it's really hot here today so um, I knitted it in my Jacobs limited edition yarn and I started it way back after just round or after Christmas and this is me just finish it now so I'm really really pleased with it and um, I'll just try and show you a little bit more of it. So I made a few modifications but the project's on Ravelry and you can find my Ravelry details below. Um, it's finished with a little eye cord here and here. Um, I made the sleeves longer and I made a few modifications around the neck so you can check that out on Ravelry if you're interested. Um, I've worn it like every day since I finished it and I absolutely love it. I love the colour, I love the fact that it's not dyed, I love the fact that I know exactly where the sheep stay and it's only like 20 minutes down the road and I'm just really pleased with it. The weight of the sweater is lovely as well, it's not too heavy, although even today it's too warm for this. You don't normally see me without a sweater on, but whoa, today <laughs> it's so warm. So um, I am really tempted just to go ahead and take this off now, but I will maybe try and persevere for you. So yes, this is my only finished object. Um, I have... I don't know if I've made any progress on this sock, but I'll show it to you anyway, just in case. So I am right the heel and I'm on the foot, but I'm still so slow. I just don't know why I'm so slow, but I'm doing okay with it. I just need to hurry up and finish the foot and see how it fits. So this was, if you didn't watch my previous episode, these were tests. Um, to try and get a really good gauge on my socks and to get a sock that fits really well. So um, they started, they both started off as swatches and then I just kept knitting. And I just thought, well, I might as well just make a sock and see how it goes. So uh, this one's on 1.5 millimeter needles. This is too small, 64 stitches. And this one's 1.75 on 1.5 uh, millimeter needles and 64 stitches. So. This one's looking like it's going to be the one that fits me. So that's quite interesting. But yeah, if you want to hear more about that, you can check out the older episodes. So yeah, no progress on that basically. A little bit of progress on my sweater design. Or not my sweater design, my shawl design. Um, yeah, I got on really, really well until I started making mistakes and then I wasn't sure like what I was doing and now I'm just kind of stuck again. So I don't know, most of it's fine apart from one particular part. So this is a shawl, my first ever design that I'm working on. It's a garter stitch shawl with the lace section just a traditional sheep shawl. I was talking about this on the Megan Stories uh, YouTube live. So um, yeah, I said then I wasn't putting a release date on it because I didn't want to put myself under pressure. I just want to have fun with it. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and I will pick it up again when I am feeling like it. <laughs> I don't know when that'll be, but I really only have one repeat left to do. And, you know, I just basically have to write, write the pattern down properly, which may involve knitting it a third time, which I'm okay with because it's quite easy and it's quite fun. And the lace, 
some lace i don't know if you find this but some lace is really it gets in your head and other lace just doesn't this is one for me that really got in my head so like i didn't have to check the instructions every single stitch i once i knew what row i was on then it's fine so but yeah there's still a lot to go on this before it can ever be released and i I'm experimenting with how I design things because some people say, oh, they write down everything first and then other people make the sample first. But I've realised that if I knit without writing down what I'm doing, I forget. So at this stage, I'm just trying to make these increases work. And then we'll see where it goes after that. But yeah, it's looking quite nice. Here's a wee close up of the lace. And this is knitted in my BFL Gotland 4 ply. And whenever I um, finish the pattern, I will make some kits for this. Why not? So um, it does have a name. I haven't released the name yet, but if you were listening closely to the Megan Stories YouTube live, you might have heard it. So <laughs> um, I asked on, this is my next project by the way, it is, uh, the pattern was a recommendation by one of my Instagram followers who clearly knows my taste very well and I was looking for a sweater to knit just because oh, I just love knitting sweaters over everything else, sweaters are my thing, I love them and um, I was asking does anyone have any pattern recommendations and um, one of my followers did so I looked it up and I was like wow this is really beautiful I wonder if it'll work in my yarn I need to do a gauge watch so it did work I bought the pattern and um, I am knitting the Kume cardigan so I really love knitting sweaters. I've never knitted a cardigan. I don't actually own a cardigan apart from the penguono, which doesn't close, which is a slightly annoying thing about it. Um, so this is one that does close <laughs> and um, it's more practical than the penguono. So this is also my first cables and I am so into them. I'm literally loving this. It's so fun. The designer is called Vanessa Pelisa and um, I just think it's going to be really, really nice. And also a cool thing about this that I've never done before is it's steeped. So I hope my yarn is okay for that. This is actually worst it spun my natural sock DK that I'm using for this. Um, and then yeah, steeped up here. So. Um, this is actually, I took some for myself, the DK version of my four ply natural sock. So it's 50% BFL, 50% TV it, 200 meters per 100 grams. So it's a DK, like a true DK. And uh, I have dyed it with nails. So here's another one from a different dye bath, but it's quite similar. Um, I was recently when I, I've done a little bit of nettle dyeing before, but the colour never ever turned out like this. So when I seen how it turned out, I was so happy. Um, like super, super pleased with the colour. Like it's so gentle and subtle and really, really beautiful. And <clears throat> I hear that um, the nettles at this time of year are really, they can give like a really good colour and they seem to be particularly good this year. So, um, my father-in-law actually picked me some nettles from a paddock behind their house and I left them at the door for me. So I got to work with dyeing the nettles. Um, I did use an iron modifier on this and I just got such a good colour. So, um, I've used up one bag. He left me two bags. Um, so I've got another bag still to use, which I will do next week. And I'm just so pleased with how this is turning out. Um, I, it's very addictive. It's a four line repeat, four is it, or eight? Um, <clears throat> it's eight, 
but it's so addictive you just want to do like just one more row just more one more row so i've actually done like quite a bit so i cast this on at the weekend and i am a slow knitter so i think this is going to be a really really nice project and yeah like some people i was chatting to this with someone on instagram uh the other day but some people turn to like summer knits like knitting with linen and knitting with um cotton and stuff but because it's rarely warm here there's just no point in doing that like this is exceptionally warm it's 21 degrees celsius and uh it's just this is unprecedented <laughs> um the most overused word in the last few months um but yeah the weather actually is so I don't tend to turn to projects with cotton and linen. Instead, I just knit things out of wool for the winter. Um, so I have, I do have a few things that I need to knit and I have a few things that I want to knit. So I would really like to knit a pair of colourwork mittens um, and I would like to knit a pair of fingerless gloves. So in my queue at the moment, I have a pattern by someone called Erica Hauser, Hauser. and um, I don't, I don't think I really know this designer, but she has a really, really nice pattern of blue and white colourwork mittens with a bird going up the middle, and it's just really nicely designed. So I would like to knit those with my Chi Vape 4 ply leftovers and um, I also know that I need to knit some socks but I cl I'm clearly trying but I'm very slow so I need to hurry up about that and um, try and at least get one sock finished um, maybe once I get one pair done it will feel more like I'm getting somewhere and then I might want to knit a few more. I probably need about really about five pairs of socks realistically for the winter so that is on my list of things to do. As well as that I would like a few dishcloths so I have to do that as well and I have to knit some for one more for my aunt and then I can knit some for myself. So those are all the things that I I would like to make in the next little while. Um, but to be honest, I've been like quite busy in the garden, so I don't, I haven't had like loads of time to knit. Like I've been knitting most days a little bit, um, but the garden sort of takes over a tiny bit. Um, we're trying to get things planted out and trying to get seeds, remember to water seeds and then weeding and digging and we're trying to dig out for a greenhouse at the moment. But we have to like level half of our garden and we're doing it by hand. Well, most of it's being done by my husband, so <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> I'm more or less looking after the flowers and cutting the grass. Sometimes he cuts the grass and watering and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, the garden has taken over, but I still have quite a bit of knitting that I'd like to accomplish. I wanted to show you as well, I finally got my contributors copy of Megan Stories magazine and um, there is a little pattern with my yarn in here and a little article that I contributed to. So I will show it to you now. So the pattern, if I could find it, is the treelage socks. I hope I'm saying that right. Trailage, treelage, treelage by um, A.L. A Long, Leong, Leong. And, um, and A.L. makes these beautiful cable socks and I think it's supposed to look like a trellis, maybe? Maybe I got that completely wrong, but I'll just read you out a little bit about it. Um, 
Yes. The tree large socks draw inspiration from intertwining vines and trellises. I was right. Man made objects that support and display climbing plants and fruit shrubs in an organised, aesthetically pleasing manner. As the plants mature, they gradually twine round these forms, echoing our personal growth. Talks also about the growth that happened when we talked about um, discrimination in the knitting community and this got her thinking about friendships and solidarity and yeah and this is knitting my natural salt core fly in the colour way faded fire I hope I got that right I love this detail at the back and AL has a really tight gauge in these socks I think if I remember correctly which is good for durability and so that's good. Um, I also have the little article. Um, there's a few contributors, including myself. And this is what it is on sustainability and business. So we're talking about that. Um, I'll just read out a couple of the questions in case you're interested. Um, what does running a sustainable business or your business uh, sustainably mean and look like for you in an ideal world. Which obstacles um, have you encountered while working towards that goal? <gasps> Double page spread of the socks. <laughs> um, I think this is actually my quote at the top of the page. <laughs> I wonder why it is the norm to want to grow. Why is it considered unambitious to be content with where you are? So that gives you a little idea of some of my thoughts. But as always, making stories is printed on the most beautiful paper with really, really nice photography. It's just lovely. So thanks for my um, contributors copy. Um, Okay, so I want to talk slightly for a little bit, slightly, my words are all over the place today. I want to talk a little bit about um, shop update stuff. The next shop update is next week on Thursday the 4th of June at 9pm GMT plus one. And I have a, it's going to be like a fair size of an update. The last one I did was a little bit in the smaller side and a lot of things sold out really quickly. So I tried to make a wee bit more this time. Um, I have the last of my TV, apart from a tiny bit, but I'll explain in a minute, is going in this update. So the most of it's going in. Um, so when I was labeling, I ran out of labels. And then, so I have a few random skeins that will go in at a later time for a little international friendly update. But I thought I would just show you a little bit. So I'm sure you've heard me talk about this yarn before. Um, it comes from the Glens of Antrim in Northern Ireland here and um, it's 100% Cheviot and um, it is spun in Wales and uh, it's a very local to me yarn um, as are all my limited editions. I know about them and where they're from and everything. It's wool and spun uh, there are 383 meters approximately per 100 grams and it is four ply. These are just three colors, three random colors I have. This one's called Coast, the blue one. The pink one is called Peony and the light pink one is called Pink Exhaust. So I have more colors than this obviously and more quantities than just three skeins but um, this will be in the shop next Thursday. And um, of course, a lot of nail dye yarn in this beautiful, lovely sedge colour. So I've just named, in case you're wondering, I've just named them nettle. So like nettle lot, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Um, but you will see that on the website. There's, I think I dyed like, I don't know, quite a bit of this. I actually dyed it on a lot of bases. I dyed it on, this is the Natural Sock DK. I've dyed it on the Natural Sock 4-ply. I've dyed it on the Wesley Deal 4-ply. Yeah, I think that's it. So it's 
so quite a lot so and I think the nettle dye yarn looks so nice with all the other yarns I just want to show you this is so nice I think all naturally dyed colors like look so good together like look at that so nice so I'm going to just show you a close-up of these this was the nettle dyed one obviously um, this one is called Oyster. It's like a very, very pale, purpley, lilac y colour. Then we have a minty and pink, one of a kind. Then we have Nettle Unmodified 2. And Fawn 3. I could see a sweater in this actually. And the last one is Fawn 1. So they're really subtle, really gentle, and Nature's palette is so gentle and lovely and subtle and beautiful. And I can really appreciate it. I also have three different sock sets and two mini skein sets. So we'll show you the sock sets first. Um, so it's 120 grams, so that is 480 metres in total. Um, this is stock set one. I'm a, I'm a fan of this one actually, and I'm a fan of the next one. Sock set two, really like this one. Don't know why I'm loving the browns at the moment. It's like a light minty greeny colour and a purpley browny mini. And sock set three, blue and purple. So, and this is them together. They look really pretty, don't they? <laughs> so that's some of the stuff for the shop. There's going to be like far more than that, but I'm not going to go through it all here. Um, if you want more sneak peeks, you can look on my Instagram. Um, and if you're not on Instagram and you want to know about shop updates, you can just look on my website and the announcement bar in the top says when the next shop update will be. And you can set your own timer that way. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for today. Hopefully this won't take like three days to upload like the last one. But um, Thank you for all your comments on the last episode too, by the way. That was really, really nice. And I know I've been really bad at replying to them all, but I do read them and I appreciate them. And um, it's nice to learn a little bit more about you as well. Um, so, and I know also I have another episode <laughs> to do um, and, uh, and ask me anything one that I need to finish off as well. So there's a few wee things I still have to do, but, um, one more thing I just wanted to mention before I go was the advent calendars. A few people have been asking me about them. Yes, I will be doing them and I hope to do two types, maybe three. Just have different options, pricing options. Um, uh, obviously I have like the full advent and then I'll have like a mini advent and then I will have like a present to oneself that you can open whenever you want. So, um, listings for those will be opening, are we in June yet? No, we're not. Uh, listings will be opening in June at some point. And, um, those, the places on them will be limited, but I will, I'm hoping to put up quite a few. Um, fingers crossed I might have a little bit of help to pack them, but... Um, I want to keep it slightly on the cautious side just in case um, I'm finding it difficult but I think it should be fine because I've got plenty of time between now and October to get them ready. Um, so yes I think I will do a little mini sewed someday just talking all about them and telling you about what might be in them. Um, I don't want to give too much away but it, there's quite a lot to talk about with them particularly for this year so I will do that in a little mini sewed um like a 10 minute mini sewed um once I have finalized all the details um 
then you can watch that to get all the information about them and I will show you last year's as well. So um, I think that's everything for today. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the sun and do my little jobs that I have to do and just have we lie down in the sun and do a wee bit of knitting. So um, I hope you're all good where you are and that you're managing to get some knitting done and some making done and some crafting and I will see you in the next episode. See you.